Hi, I'm Anna, and you're listening to Athena's Life Podcast. Welcome to episode 3. Before starting this episode, I would like to thank all of you for the amazing comments and the hype that I've been getting for these episodes. Like, y'all are the shit! Fucking hell. This is, this is cool as fuck. And also, in the past two days, uh, the curtain rod of the window behind me fell. And the only thing that's holding up the whole thing to not fall is my window, which is half opened. So, if you hear birds chipping this morning, or cars passing down, just pretend it's part of the ambience. Now, on to the episode. Today's episode is an episode that's going to be very dear to me. I know I'm going to look back at it a lot, uh, especially in the next few months, because the th- today's theme is using the word love. I know, it's very cheesy. So, I love using the word love. As much as I love using the sentence I'm proud of you with some people. But a few days ago, as I was talking with a friend, they told me that they thought I used it to declare types of love they did not believe was true love. They said that I was throwing the word around, and that saying it too much was something not okay. And I asked myself, why would they say that? What is their own definition of love? Because to them to believe that love should not be something to be told that much, it surely means that their love must be absolutely amazing, right? So I have looked at the word love. Love is a cultural word. We use it in tons of different contexts. Like, I love this food, I love you, I love this person. I love these shoes. But the richness and the variety of the English language really shows with the word love. Because we love using the word love. So what do we say when we love something? I looked a bit down and I went back to ancient Greece. I found three definitions of love. Eros, which is the sensual or passionate love. It is the lover's love, the romantic love you feel towards someone. Then philos, which is the brotherly love, or the friendship love, the one where you feel like you want to help or you will work together. And then there's agape. Agape is the profound most thoughtful love. It is the sacrificial, the love that transcends everything, the one that you can only have either for God or for your soulmate. A love which I thought was the only type of love for the longest, the highest form of love. You learn to love as you grow. But it also means coming to recognize separateness. Love involves caring about what goes on the inside of the other person and not simply loving them because of the way you feel. And not everyone is capable of that. But we use the love and the word love a lot. We tend to use the word love to mean that we love. So what do we, how do we love? We love like we were taught to love. The people who love us, or who are supposed 
de love us, teach us how to love. We want our love to reflect profound physical emotions from our heart. Something different and unique. Something immensely personal as it, as if nothing else exists in that moment. Personally, I've never been the most optimistic person, but lately I have been trying. I've been trying to see, I've been trying to see and share the good in others. To mirror to them back their good traits and what goes through their love. I do believe that my way of loving has evolved with my definition of love. I used to never say the words, I love you. Or at least only when I thought it wasn't truly meant. I would guard myself up and I would totally refuse to use the words, I love you. And sometimes I still feel like I do. But as I was doing that, I learned to admire the ones who were capable to love endlessly. No matter what, some people are capable of feeling. Actually feeling things. And feeling things for other. They had this radiating energy that drew people towards them. And with time and experience, I learned to let go. I learned to let my love Giving my love doesn't make it less valuable. Love isn't a currency. It's an expression of oneself. Fun fact, when I wrote this episode, or at least a part of it, my sister Lilu was sitting next to me. I hadn't seen her in two months. As you guys will learn to know, I have a very complicated family history and as I escaped the situation that I was in two months ago I stopped all contact with my sister but one day she called me out of nowhere she actually facetimed me and her first words were I'm sorry she apologized like she never did before we were the types of siblings who would never apologize to one another, but would look at each other in the eyes and just decide the deed was done and the wrong was gone. But she apologized. She apologized and said she missed me. She missed the way we laughed together even though we hadn't done that in ages. And from that day on, I received tiny updates on how she was doing. Fun fact, <laughs> when I sat down next to her that day, she told me she listened to this podcast. Mind you, my sister is a very busy person. She's one of the most amazing human beings I've ever seen. And I do feel a lot of fellows love for her. She is an amazing and busy person and she has never truly been interested in anything that I have ever been doing. Most of my achievements don't really interest her as she has other achievements in her head. She's extremely power driven and that's something that I love about her. But that day she sat down next to me and said, by the way, you laugh different when you're recorded. My mind instantly went, what? And she turned around and she said, yeah, I, I listen to your podcast. That shocked me a lot. It touched me to the deepest, deepest part of me. She listened. I put my voice out there for the first time of my life. And the one person for whom my love will never end listened. So love is weird. Love is weird and how we experience it is even weirder. I know she's probably hearing this at this moment and thinking, why the hell is she talking about me? But I mean, you're the person that I love the most in this world. So, say a little hi. <laughs> So my own definition of love has evolved. 
it has evolved with my life and it has evolved with who I am. As I said, I used to feel like agape, so the profound sacrificial love, was the only way of loving. It meant overwhelming feelings, involved sacrifice, dedication. It involved pushing yourself to the limit for love. Often pushing yourself to perfection or to something that was different. It, I believed that this type of love was the only way of loving. But I have learned my lesson. I, I truly did. Love can also be soft. It can be caring. Nurturing even. Love can be everywhere. You don't need a grand sacrificial gesture to fall in love. As I sat down next to my sister and she said that she was listening to my podcast, it was not a huge sacrifice. It was not her giving me a million euros. It was not her going out of her way to make me feel better. It was just her listening. And I feel like this type of love is too underrated. The way we use the word love does not truly mean this type of love. So, I don't know why this type of love is not truly recognized. Probably because we're afraid of it. Because we believe that harshness and overwhelm is better, at least means more, than soft and caring. But the true strength from that. Now, now that I've done this episode, I truly believe true strength resides in being capable of loving. To be capable of loving endlessly, truthfully and wholeheartedly. To be capable of giving your heart, not over and over to anybody, but to choose who to give it to. And once that person is in, once that person has gone through all the barriers you put in front of yourself, love them endlessly. And throw around the word love if it enables you to do so. Because true strength comes from loving. As some of you probably already know, I am someone who reads a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. Since I was a kid, the only thing you could do would be to put a book into my hands and you could come back hours later and I'd still be in the same position reading that book. But that's for another episode. Why I'm mentioning this is... I think I forgot to mention the fact that... We are taught how to love by the people who love us, but also by the representations of the love that we see. It's why representation matters so much. For example, there's a reason why fairy tales and fantasy love stories exist. Because we wish to truly believe in the all-consuming love. The fairy tale love where you would give the world for that person, where you would save them from a dragon or from a sleeping spell. This type of love. But in real life, we often tend to see that it's not the case, that this is not how true love goes. And we very much tend to be really disappointed. I mean, I'm disappointed in fairy tales for teaching us the meaning of the word love was fighting off a giant dragon with a toothpick. Because truthfully, that's not something I'll ever do. But I've also not only read fantasy and fairy books, I read many different kinds of things. I read philosophy books, I read mindset and growth books. Why do you guys think I'm doing this podcast? It's for me to give back everything that I've learned. But I've been reading and there was this one book that described the way we use the words. 
The way we use our words is the way we define reality. Your word is the most powerful thing in the world. Just because you can say it, you can create an entire new reality. You put a spell. Speaking is magic. The way you speak, the way you are, who you are, is magic. If I tell you that you're looking beautiful today, and I should because you are fucking looking beautiful, god damn, I'm putting a spell on you. If I choose to be an asshole and tell you that you are not looking good today, then I put another type of spell on you. But still, my word is the one thing that changes everything. So should I be saying the word love that much? Maybe? Maybe not. As I'm coming to the end of this episode, I really have been asking myself where I want to end this. And should I be throwing the word love around as much as I am? Maybe, maybe not. It's probably a very personal question. Maybe, maybe I'm doing good by throwing the word love around. Because some people don't hear it as much as I do. The word love truly is a very personal definition then. Because we love how we learned to love. So maybe that friend of mine was right. Maybe f to w for them, the only way they can express their love is to not show it until they really feel like showing it. But to me, that love is so pure that I want it to radiate. I want to be able to feel strong enough to say, I love. So... I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm gonna give you guys a little challenge. Two little challenges, actually. First one will be to listen again to this episode and try to count the number of times in which I said the word love. From this moment on. Please have a blast and tell me how much I said it. Because I believe I at least went over 40. And another challenge for you guys is to learn to say I love you to some people. Maybe try for a few days throwing the word love around. See if it changes anything. And if it does, please tell me. Because I would love to see if your word is truly magic. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. But I believe we can still learn from doing this little challenge. I'll do so. I'll do the same, and I'll give you guys an update on next episode. If saying the word love as much as I did in this episode truly changed my life. So we'll see. So, until we meet again, get loving. I hope you have an amazing day. And I'm gonna say it. I love y'all. <laughs> see you next week. <laughs>